No, I didn't. I didn't connect it to them. Good morning, Mana Tabernacle family and all our viewers. What a wonderful Sunday morning. We are just grateful for the gift of life. We are grateful for the grace of the new day. And surely this is the day the Lord has made that we may rejoice and be glad in this day as we continue to sing how great is our God. He is worthy of all the praise. Name above all names. You, O oh Lord, alone are to holy and you are worthy of our, our praise. Family, this morning, I just want us to take this few minutes as we worship the Lord. Wherever you are, I know we have sat down together as families, even as, you know, maybe you are alone or you have your children, but together as a family, that is a family church. Eh? And I want to say, let us just take these two minutes in prayer and even as we worship God this morning before we continue with the service. Father, we thank you this morning. We worship your name, my God. We grateful, Lord, for this new day. My Father, we thank you for waking us up in our rightful mind. We say how great is your name, O God. How great is your name, O Jehovah. When I scream, I would say, Bekile. Ukase minkarin kwa yuskwembu iken satin solota wena, iken sari rantura wena papa, iken sa vutwunene za wena evdomene zahina. We thank you, O God, this morning. Lord, we sit around my father just to worship your name, to say you alone at worthy, O God. You alone are worthy. You are holy, almighty God. We bless your name, my Father. We say receive all the glory this morning, my Father. My Father, we exalt your holy name. You are the sovereign Lord, Jehovah the Almighty God. We love you, Lord. We bless your name. Oh, we thank you, oh my God, for your great grace upon us. We exalt your name and we say be increased in our lives, my Father. This morning, even as we sit for your word, my God, we welcome you, Father. We thank you for God, the Holy Spirit, Lord, who is the teacher this morning. That even as we sit around, my Father, your table, my God, we open our hearts, Lord, for your word. For in your word you say, every word that comes from your mouth will not return to you void. But Father, it will accomplish that which you have purpose concerning our lives. May it be so, my Father. May the entrance of your word brings light and understanding this morning in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. And we thank you for the grace to speak your word, my God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bless your name. Thank you so much. Family, we thank God. We, we, we are grateful for this wonderful time to meet from our different homes and share the word of God to encourage each other and also to receive what is it that God says to us as individuals, as men and women, as families, even as a church, Manata Banekal. And we hear what God says to us in a times like this. You know, if there's a, a phrase in the Bible, which it's innumerable, it's the phrase that God says or that says the Lord. You see, every time we gather in a service to hear the word of God, we are coming to our moment of thus says the Lord. And it is a very important time because on our own we don't know what will happen tomorrow or how to respond to tomorrow's challenges but the word of god keep us alive the word of god keep us positioned and we thank god for this opportunity may i take this time also this morning as i welcome you all of you all people joining us for our sunday service this morning we thank god for you we still online we have not res yet resumed with our services and we want to appreciate you for your commitment in following us and i want also to appreciate manata banekal i know this is not free but it is you know about your data 
and we thank God who sustained us. You know, in these three or four months that we have been running our online services, it is just by God's grace. And I want to say to Manata Banekel family and all our loved ones, let us take advantage of all the services that are coming to us and let us also catch up with them as we are sent from the admin through our whatsapp group and may we continue in the word of god you know if there's a time where you need the word of god more than any other time it is the season we are going through and we say as the word of God comes to us through the servants of God that he has raised at Manatabanekal, let us make sure that we take this time seriously. I want to believe it is our time of Elijah when he was hiding from the message of Jezebel. You see, when the angel of the Lord came to him, it woke him up. It shook him. I don't know, maybe we are sleeping. But you see, there is a time where God will wake you up and say, it is time to take the word for the journey that lies ahead is still long. And I'm saying, Manata Banekel, while still in this uh, lockdown and while still not yet coming to fellowships, let's make sure that we take as much as we can because the journey that is ahead of us it's still long but may i take this time also to appreciate the overseer our father pastor strike he has been taking us through in this month of our 20th anniversary celebration and we thank god for the grace gift of god in our lives the servant of the lord who always brings a word that will position us will awaken us will align us to the calling of God and to the purposes of God in our lives. Men of God, we love to appreciate you. We love to thank God because when we stand today and say we celebrate the 20 years of Manata Banekal, in other words, we are celebrating the grace of God that reached unto us as Manata Banekal family. Today we stand as a church, we stand as family that has impacted lives because of the grace of God that is upon your life. The grace of God upon Manata Banekel, it is the grace of God that God has released upon your life. And we thank God that it has reached to us. Our lives are never be the same, are never the same again. And we say glory to our God. Wow, Manata Banekel, the topic and the title of this month cannot be any other thing except the journeys of Manata Banekel, which our overseer started. And I would love to continue building on it also, as I appreciate all pastors who have been coming on the platform to continue in the word of God. But before I start sharing the word of God this morning, let me also ap uh, appreciate our technical team. These are men, you know, they are working day and night. They may not be physically here, but wherever they are, I, even now, I know they are communicating from wherever they are to say, hey, check what, check what. This is commitment to the vision of the church because we are in the lockdown. It's not all of us who can come and make sure that we put things together as we have been used. But these guys, they make sure that everything that is needed to take us on air, it is made to be available and it is in place. We want to appreciate you. We say may the almighty God continue to bless you. This morning, beloved, as we take off in the word of God, I want to encourage you, we're going through a difficult time, even as a nation, globally also. But beloved, I want to appreciate you for holding on, trusting in the Lord Almighty God, for He is our refuge. He is our hiding place. It is tough, the waves are beating against our boats. But I want to say, as we continue crying unto God, let us know that he is in control. Let us know that he is concerned about your life. He is concerned about your family. And our God is able. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. 
And I want to appreciate, I wanted to forget, the team of warriors. You know, at Manata Banekel, uh, unlike before, God has risen a team, you know, of women that are standing every 4 o'clock a.m. to say we are standing in the gap, not only for Manata Banekel, but we are crying because we are called by the name of the Almighty. We say, soldier on, warriors as we continue to see the hand of the lord as we continue to hear of the the recovery percentage we say glory to our god this is the battle that we are going on but we know our god is fighting on our behalf for he is the great man of war now as we continue family we thank god that the month of july as manata banekal it has brought us to our mispa like in the time of israel you know it it brought us in a time to reflect on the grace and the love of god that we have experienced in the 20 years of mana tabernacle and that is the reason in this month you hear us saying it has been by grace that we made it until this far in other ways we are saying we are lifting a stone and saying to god Ebenezer, you have brought us thus far by your grace. For thus far, you have helped us. And this is the reason we cannot stop saying it has been by grace. It has not been by power, nor by might, or by our wisdom. But the grace of the Lord carried us through. And we are saying we are grateful to the Almighty God. You know, our Father, as He took us throughout this month, he spoke of the journey of King David, you know, to the throne. And it made us to understand that, you know, when the, uh, he was anointed by the prophet Samuel, it did not just boom, happen the next day, he was on the throne. But, you know, one thing that uh, the men of God emphasized, it was the process that took place. It, it is the, about the event that the anointing that afternoon was just the event. But the process had to unfold. And you realize even as he, you know, he opened up, you know, the story and the journey of King David. That he went so many things in his life, so many experiences. I, I will not want to go to each one of them. But all what he went through. You know, it was a process. The process that was unfolding, the process that was preparing him for the assignment that God has already ordained for him. And I want to say, Manata Banekal, as we celebrate this 20 years, let us also be able to look at the process that God has taken us through. You know, in the 20 years, there have been so many experiences. Some of the experiences, you will not want to go back to them. But all of them worked together for good. For, for Manata Banekel to be where she is today and our lives to be where they are today. Another experience that we see in the Word of God. It is the, you know, the, 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 the journey of Israel, you know, we, 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 these are our key scriptures that we read most of the time. You know, when we look at the journey of Israel, you know, they are took off from Egypt that night. That was an event and they were so excited of the event because it was for after 400 years in slavery. Now, when they took off, when that event happened, beloved, it was not enough. They were being introduced to a process. The journey in the wilderness was a process because in the wilderness they met and you know experienced different things. The Red Sea was there, hunger was there, you know, thirst was there, Sep says, as, uh, fiery serpents were there. You see, so the journey or the wilderness journey was a process, you know. A process that God was taking Israel through before they land into the promised land, the land of milk and honey. And I want to say, family, as Mana Tabernacle celebrate and continue to reflect on the journeys of the 20 years, I want to say it gives me and you the opportunity to reflect 
on your personal life. It gives you an opportunity as a family to reflect on the, your journey, the grace of God in your journey. It also gives us an opportunity, even as a nation, to look at our lives and also to, 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 to see and to appreciate the process that God has taken us through. And I want also to start with Deuteronomy chapter 8, which is our key scripture in the journeys of Mana Tabernacle. I know we have been preaching this scripture, and maybe it is time that it becomes alive to each one of us as sons and daughters of Mana Tabernacle. Now, we read in Deuteronomy chapter 8, we are starting from verse 2 today. Deuteronomy 8, starting from verse 2. And I'm reading in the New Living Translation. It reads as follows. Remember how the Lord your God led you through the wilderness for these 40 years, humbling you and testing you to prove your character and to find out whether or not you will obey his commands. Verse 3, yes, he humbled you by letting you go hungry and then feeding you with manna, a food previously unknown to you and your ancestors. He did it to teach you that people do not live by bread alone, rather we live by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Amen. That is the reading of the word of God, family. Now, starting from verse 2, family, because we have spoken a lot about this scripture, I, I want just to extract two words or two concepts in this scripture, which I want to dwell most on today in my sharing. It says, remember how the Lord your God led you through the wilderness for these 40 years humbling you and testing you hallelujah the two words which i feel they are, are very important or they're very important to look at closely is humble and test hallelujah now the bible says moses remind israel he he he, he brings it takes them you know the time of of Deuteronomy, it is the time of remembrance or the time of repetition of the law. But you know, he, amongst everything that he seeks to remind them on this journey from the day they left Egypt. Now, in this chapter, he stand up and say, "Remember, remember how God led you." He's bringing vividly the journey and the experiences that they went through in the wilderness. He says, God humbled you and God tested you. So beloved, this again says to me and you, some of our experiences that we go through in life, they are not just happening just as for to happen, but they've got a purpose to humble and to test. Hallelujah. Now, when we look at the word humble, what is to humble? Because it is a very familiar word that we normally speak of. You know, when you are given something which you don't deserve, you feel, I am humbled. I am so humbled by their gesture. When you are invited to a platform which you know I don't deserve if it is not of God, you realize that, you know, you are so humbled because... You felt you are not worthy to stand or to sit in that platform. You see, we, we always talk of the word humble in different ways. Where to a point I can also say of myself, I feel humbled of their gesture. I feel humbled of, you know, whatever they have said or spoken about me. But I want to bring it, you know, he, he, according to God who, uh, when he says he humbled because in this case beloved it is him humbling us now when you look in the in the dictionary a simple simple definition of the word humble is for you is, is when you are made or you are made to feel less important or proud huh? 
You know, it is when you are made to feel less important. You know, your self, your self esteem is reduced. But in this scripture, in this text, it says he humbled you. Now, I think there's a difference when, you know, you are humbled by a situation or when God intentionally humbles you. Because when God humbles you, it's when he intentionally or purposefully squeeze, squeeze you out of yourself, out of your pride, out of your arrogance, and out of your self-centeredness. Hallelujah. When God humbles you, he deals with you. He deals with your pride. He deals with your self-esteem. He deals with your arrogance. And he deals with your self-centeredness. I want us to, 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 to mark that. That, you know, there is a difference when I'm given an opportunity. When, you know, I feel I don't deserve it. And I feel, you know, it humbles me. And uh, again, looking at when God humbles you. Hallelujah. Now, but I've realized... According to the scripture, when he humbles you, he wants to prove you. Hallelujah. So, you see, when God humbles you, there is an objective that he wants to achieve. God says, I humbled you. I caused you to hunger so that I can prove and I can know that which is in your heart. At the very same time that you also may know that man cannot live by bread alone, but man will live by every word that proceed out of my mouth. So says the Lord. Hallelujah. So I, I want us to get that straight. Why? Because we are saying in these 20 years, the Lord humbled us. And I don't want us to, to reach home, you know, because when we reach home, we will fail to know you know, to full com uh, sorry to complete the process because I want to believe. You see, where we are, even according to the journeys of Israel, when we take time, even when we stand here and say we are celebrating 20 years, when you go through the book of Numbers 33, you know, starting from verse 1 going to, to, to verse 9, which we have read, or maybe we can read because it's very important to keep repeating these scriptures so that they come home and we understand exactly the journey and the process that God is taking us through. You see, in, in Numbers chapter 33, God said something to, to Moses even when he took Israel out. after Immediately after the event, you know, God spoke to his servant and said, you need to mark your point of genesis. You need to mark every experience that you go through. So that is what I'm saying. Even as Manata Banekel, when God took us through these 20 years, there are so many points that he has taken us through. And when we say we stand to celebrate, we are looking at those points. We are glorifying God for all the points and the experiences that we went through. In Numbers, he says, this is the road Israelites followed as they marched out of Egypt under the leadership of Moses and Aaron. At the Lord's direction, Moses kept a written record of their progress. I love that. Moses kept a written record of their progress. For what? For just for them to be reminded of the challenges in the wilderness, the hunger. No, but for them to testify of what the Lord has done in their lives. Hallelujah. Now, it says these are the stages of their march. Identified by the different places where they stopped along the way. You see, the wilderness journey was a process. The process that, you know... I, 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 I took them to different phases of their journey. Now, we know from verse 3, it will say they set out from Ramses in the early spring. And But I love, I love at uh, verse 9. Let me just fast forward to verse 9. They left Mara and camped at Elim, where there were 12 springs of water 
and 70 palm trees you see from verse 3 you see the starting point yes the starting point is egypt but you see all the places they camped in ramses sarkoth you know you count all of them each one of them they had an experience now when you go to verse 9 it says they also came at a place called mara and you know the story of mana that's what i'm saying every point had a story attached to it and every story i be want to believe they experience they experienced the grace of god but they did not remain in one place that is why it says they camped from mara they camped in ilim now in ilim at least we are told here it says where there were 12 springs of water and 70 palm trees you see manna is a place where when they came they met the bitter waters and they cried they complained like we me and you we will do but god came through for them and the waters became sweet and from there he moved them to elim the bible says in elim there were 12 springs of water and 70 palm trees you see now that i can say it was a place of refreshing Family, that is the reason I am saying, as we reflect on the grace of God upon Mana Tabernacle for 20 years, I want you also to look at your life so that you will appreciate the process God has taken you through. That you have never you have you were not in one camp the rest of your life. There have been joyous moments in your life. Yes, there have been valleys, there have been mountains. But beloved, when we teach ourselves to reflect on our lives, we will always be thankful to God because we see the grace of God. We see the love of God. Yes, there have been times of crying like other families are crying at the moment. But there have been a time of testifying of the goodness of the Lord. Times of testifying of the healings of the Lord. Times of testifying of the breakthroughs of the Lord hallelujah so beloved i want to say let us not only be taken of, of the uh, by the 20 years but this 20 years may it remind you of what god has done in your life hallelujah so the journeys of israel were journey were a pro was a process that took them through a different phases of their journey hallelujah now i said we're talking of two ways here now the second one is test now in, in in deuteronomy it says he humbled you to test you so these words they go together god can humble you god can test you and hear me very well i'm not talking of tempt temptation i'm talking of god testing us because in deuteronomy when he gave this scripture to our father as one of the foundation scriptures of mana tabernacle it says god humbles god tests and he humbles to prove he humbles to qualify he tests you to to qualifies you hallelujah now when we look at a simple definition of the word test it says it is a procedure to is a procedure intended to establish the quality number one performance number two reliability of something before it is taken into widespread use hallelujah i loved this definition that this is a procedure intended to establish the quality performance reliability of something before it is taken into widespread use hallelujah i don't know what you hearing but i am hearing that you know what hey if god test me he test me to check me on the quality on the performance and the reliability that i carries before he can publicly you know or before he can announce me so these beloved are two ways that we see god taking israel through and today we are saying as mana tabernacle god established these two ways or these two principles in our lives and i want to say beloved let us know that god humbles god tests. but when you look in the word of god which i want us to run to today in the book of genesis chapter 22 
We're reading verse 1 and verse 12 there. In Genesis 22, verse 1, and we will also be reading verse 12. It reads as follows. Sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied, here I am. Hallelujah. Now, from verse 1, it says, God tested Abraham's faith. So, me and you, we agree that God can test you. God take you through a process to prove the quality, to check on the, you know, the durability, the strength. And here God comes to his servant. And you know, this time God comes after when he has fulfilled his promise to Abraham. Remember, Abraham did not have a son. And when Isaac was born, after so much waiting, after so much believing God for this promise, God comes to Abraham and the Bible says, God tested. I want to believe it is not a mistake that this word appears here, that God tested Abraham. And you know the test that he went through. The test was for him to take his only son, to go and make a sacrifice, not together with the son, but by his son. That his son become the sacrifice in the mountain. Hallelujah. And I don't want to go through that, the process, because it has been a process that Abraham had to go through. But let's read verse 12 and see something here. In verse 12. It says in verse 12, don't lay, or maybe let me start in verse 11. At that moment, the angel of the Lord called to, Ab to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, Abraham replied, here I am. Don't lay a hand on the boy, the angel said. Do not hurt him in any way. For now I know that you truly fear the Lord. Hallelujah. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Now, listen to one statement here. It says, do not hurt him in any way. For now I know. Hallelujah. I wanted, you to, I want, I wanted to bring you to that point. That you see, what God introduced in verse 1. It was purposeful because in verse 12, God says, or the angel of the Lord says, I now know, don't kill your son. So you see, the test was for Abraham to be qualified. The test was for Abraham to, to you know, to be trusted. Because I think in verse 1, when he said, here I am, he was saying, Lord, I am ready to go through this test. Sometimes as people, when we go through the test of our lives, we feel God has forsaken us. But I want me and you today to see this scripture in another way or in another angle. That you know, God can come and test you. But the test of the Lord is to approve you. The test of the Lord comes to promote you. The test of the Lord comes to trust you. I always say, you cannot be trusted before you are tested. Hallelujah. So it is even with our children, our children, our learners. You know that for you to be trusted with a higher grade, you have to go through the testing. You know, Muringo, Ngachi Venda, or Shikambelo. You know, it's Changani, Naku Sveka Kate, Iku Shikambelo. But Wakamberiwa. Kurishana unga sukota kuya aka the next level na. Kaspede aikitsibi libita muliko. But you know, muliko in a positive way of testing you that will you be able to carry this? And I want to say, Mana Tabanekel, God humbled you in this 20 years. God tested you in this 20 years. Not that, yes, we have arrived. We may not have arrived, but you see, the testing of the Lord, you know, uh, continues. But I want you 
you to know that hey, the 20 years was not for you to stand boastfully and say, yeah, we have made it. We are 20 years. But in the 20 years, God had a portion. In the 20 years, God was taking you through a process. The process of testing. The process of humbling you. The process, you know, of qualifying you. That can you be able to uh, be a transforming agent? Can you be able to stand up and declare the power of God that you have seen through your different camps that God has taken you through in these 20 years? I want to know you to know family even in the situation that you may be going through yes together as a nation globally also we are going through this season of the pandemic yes there are families that already went down the valley they tested positive family you would never seen anything because I want to believe the test of the Lord comes for a promotion the test of the Lord comes to qualify you but let me tell you somebody who's your enemy will never test you but he will tempt you he will tempt you to destroy you he will tempt you to kill you for you not to be known anymore but when you go through even a situation which the enemy may have been may have brought in your life let me tell you that god will allow it for a purpose to test you to qualify you to promote you and i want you to know that even as you go through your test go through it knowing that my god is seeing it my god is in control you see there's a song a shangani song written by one of our brothers i love it the most sometimes when the 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 the, 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 the going gets tough you know i sing this song you know you have never gone through a challenge or a temptation which is or a test which is above that which you can carry and you know when he continues he says hey this is an examination this is a test write it so that you will not disappoint heaven because heaven trusted you that you will write this exam you will write this test and pass it with flying colors I love it, you know, in Shangani, it says, "Au se Shangana nanti ngolonga kuringa niku makwero." Le shishi kambelo tala upasa. Le shokunga komi siti lotinga na. Be like Daniel who wrote his test. Be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who wrote their test. Hey, beloved, I, 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 I don't know if you get what I'm getting. That God will test you to prove you. God will test you to to promote you. God will test you to trust you with his treasures. And I want you to know as we're going through this season, as we're celebrating 20 years of Mana Tabernacle, that you are going through this test for your promotion. You are going through this test. Some may be grinding, hiding in a corner, say, I, but this situation is unbearable now. You know, the rest of the family has tested positive. What is it that we may have seen? Uh uh, there's nothing that you have seen. God allowed it for a purpose. And as you go through it, know that you are not alone. He is with you. Listen to what he says to Abraham. He says, don't hurt the boy. Don't kill the boy. For now I know. Beloved, if there's a word that I'm waiting from my master, is to hear my master saying to me, for now I know that you love me. For now I know that you trust me. For now I know that you depend on me. I, I, I want to believe, beloved, even when you go through that challenging time, God is with you. He is not standing somewhere else waiting for you to fail. But you know, he is there with you to carry you. That is why he said, I wanted to prove you. I caused you to hunger. Hey, can God, God cause you to hunger? Meanwhile, he's a provider. Yes, there are situations that he will allow to cause you to hunger, to cause you to thirst. But God meant it for good because he wants to prove to you that you will not live by natural bread alone, but you will live by the sustenance of the Almighty God. Hallelujah. As a business person, since the lockdown, you're saying, Pastor, but the business is stuck. 
There's nothing happening. Hey, remember the widow of Zarephath. The Bible says there was famine for more than three and a half years. But the Bible says as she stood on what God told her to do through the mouth of Elijah, the Bible says the, 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 the flower never dried, dried, never dried up in her bucket. You know, she was sustained throughout the drought season. And I'm saying, family, God is with you even in that situation. Hallelujah. Oh, the Lord trusts those that he has tested. Hallelujah. God qualified Abraham as the father of faith. Beloved, that challenge that you are going through, you are walking out of it with a testimony. God is trusting you with us, test that testimony so that you can encourage the brethren. Jesus said to Peter, Hey, Simon, Simon, the devil wanted to sift you, but I prayed for you. And when you have come out, hey, go and strengthen the brethren. If you have tested positive, beloved, look up to God and say, I am coming out defiantly out of this storm. And I am coming out strengthened. I am coming out with a testimony. And whoever will hear my testimony will live and not die. Whoever will hear of my testimony will be encouraged to know that there is a God. This says you are ready to shout of what God has done in your life. I want you not to cower away and say, we are affected. We don't know what we have done. We don't know if we're going to survive. You are going to survive because the word of God says, I shall not die, but I shall live to tell the good words of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to quickly to read with you Psalm 66 as we are closing. In Psalm 66, uh, reading verse 10. Oh, blessed be the name of the Almighty. Psalm 66, starting from verse 10, it says, You have tested us, O God. You have purified us like silver. You captured us in your net and laid the burden of slavery on our backs. Then you put a leader over us. We went through fire and flood, but you brought us to a place of great abundance. Let me read it also with the Amplify. It says, For you have tested us, O God. You have refined us as silver is refined. You brought us into the net. You laid a heavy burden of servitude on us. You made men to ride over our heads in defeat. We went through fire and through water. Yet you brought us out into a broad place of abundance to be refreshed. Hallelujah. Oh, beloved. Beloved, you cannot taste your place of abundance to be refreshed. To be refreshed before you go through the testing of the Lord. Before you are refined like silver. The Bible says, you have tested us, O oh God. Hey, this thing, O oh God, as you took us through this experience, we did not know. But now we can stand and say, oh God, you have tested us. You have refined us as silver. You know, beloved, even when they go down to dig on gold, you know, they, does, they don't just dig the gold and go sell it in the market, but it goes through the fire. Hallelujah. Some of the situations that are happening in our lives is when we are in the fire, beloved. But this fire is not meant to destroy us. This fire is not meant to kill us. But, beloved, it is meant to, you know, to refine us. It, may, it is meant and Lord, to take out everything that you know was contaminating us because God wants to display us as an art of work that he has created. You know, as a masterpiece that he can say, devil, look at my masterpiece. Beloved, the word of God says, you brought us into a net. You know, there came a time where you were not even, uh, you were not able even to say, 
Oh my God is able to do one, two, three. It's like you were closed up in a net. It's like you were ensnared. You could not even say anything that your family could believe that you are serving the Lord who is able to do the miraculous. But beloved, in that place, it was a training. He says again, you made men, chariots to ride over our heads. In other words, you made men to defeat us in the battles that we were going through. Some of the battles we were defeated, but that was purposeful. That had a testimony, oh God, because, you know, when you take us out of this situation, beloved, the purpose was to bring us to a place of abundance, the place of refreshing. Family, I want to say, as you are going through that challenging time, that afflicting time, that time of COVID-19 as a family, know that God is taking you out to your place of abundance. And I want to leave you with 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8. Because of time, because I want to give to our overseer to pray for us and also to to lead those of you who I have tested positive as families and those of our doctors, our nurses who are standing, you know, saving the nation of God. But, you know, I love this scripture, which I'm leaving you with even in, 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 in this week that you can continue going through it and, you know, proclaiming it. You see, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8, it says, We are hard pressed. Let me just open it from my tablet here instead of paraphrasing it oh praise the lord the lord is so good oh he is faithful to his word it says we are pressed on every side by troubles but we are not crushed wow we are perplexed but not driven to despair we are hunted down but never abandoned by God. Amen, brother. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. This is the message that I'm leaving with you, that as you go through your humbling moment, as you go through your testing time, know that all these are meant to press you on every side. But you see, the Bible says we are not Christ. We are not to despair. We are not abandoned by God. We are not destroyed. For God is with us. May God bless you, even as our overseer pray with us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor Jaylin. Thank you so very much for ministering to us this morning. We just want to bless God for this wonderful and powerful word, the journeys of Mana Tabernacle, which are the journeys of our lives which are the genies of your life, the genies of your family. And we just want to say thank you so very much, woman of God, for this liberating word. And as we receive this word and as we enjoy this word, friends, we want to go and pray with every one of us, we want to lift every one of us before God. As the battle gets fierce, I want you to know, my friend, that this God that we serve is an awesome God. He's a gracious God. He's a powerful God. He's a God who cares. And it's true, when he tests us, I want you to know it is for approval. I want you to know that it is for better and higher assignment. Until you are tested, you cannot be trusted. And friends, that is why when he tested Abraham and said, give me your only son. You know what? When he saw Abraham's heart, he said, now I've seen your heart. Don't kill your son. And that is why Abraham to date is the father of faith because he has been tested by Almighty God. And I'm saying to us all, friends, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the testing of the Lord is not for to crush you, it is not for to destroy you, but it is for to uplift you, it is for to also elevate you. But when the devil tempts you, he tempts you to kill you, he tempts you to destroy you. But thanks be to our God. Even when the enemy comes with temptations, you know what the Bible says, or God says, there's no temptation that has overtaken you, yeah. which is not common among men. And even with the temptation, God Almighty, Jesus, who died on the cross of Calvary, provides a way out. Now today, family, in the heat of this uh, wave of the coronavirus uh, battle that we are engaged in, I want to say something even from the word of God, what uh, the woman of God has encouraged us in our journeys, that you know, oh, you know what? Fear not. Amen. Be of good courage. Be of good cheer. Fear not. 
for the Lord is with you and God is in control. I want to pray right now. Today, I want, I want us to start with those people that are, have tested positive. I want to say to you all, I had pastor speaking uh, because, you know, through the broadcast, we have people uh, knowing that we are praying and we are encouraging people. And she gets calls from uh, everywhere. And uh, sometimes people are shattered because they tested positive. But when after she's spoken with them, you know what? They pick up the courage and the following day they tell her, no, I'm fine now. Because, friends, the battle is not much physical. The battle is not much medical, or, or but it's more mental. It's more psychological. When you are told that you are positive, somehow, you know, the devil wants to freeze your thinking. He wants you to see your grave. He wants to see yourself dying. And because of that, you know, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Because of that you become sick even physically you just get the diagnosis or you get the status today and the next thing tomorrow you manifesting all the symptoms i'm saying to you dear friends it's true that this virus has taken many lives but it is true again that people beat this virus and it is true that god almighty is able to take you through so that you come out with a testimony you come out with the good news to tell and i want you to be one of those who says i shall live and not die refuse to fear refuse to cower away now friends we pray for you all of you who have tested positive all of you who are following us on the facebook mana tabernacle family every one of you we want to lift you before god father in the name of jesus Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. We thank you, Father, that you did a finished work on the cross. When you said it is finished, yes, it is finished. You redeemed us from destruction. You redeemed us from death. You redeemed us from sicknesses, from diseases. Right now, I declare the word of the Lord upon these, our brothers and sisters, that have tested positive. And I say in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, you shall live and not die. You shall come out with a testimony. You shall come out in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I rebuke the spirit of fear. Spirit of fear, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. You shall not overburden them. You shall not overweigh them in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, I thank you that your healing power, your healing virtue floods their entire beings in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, for the peace in their minds, peace that surpasses understanding, peace that makes them see life instead of death in Jesus' name. I want to pray today for all our doctors, our nurses, all those people that are so exposed, we are saying our dear family members who are working in the hospitals, working even in intensive UK units, working and have seen many succumb to the virus. We want to pray for you. May God Almighty strengthen you. May God Almighty comfort you. May God Almighty heal you. May God Almighty strengthen you in the name that's above every name. We pray that these feelings, these feelings that are running in your minds every day because of what you have seen, may the peace of God erase them. May the peace of God cover you. May the peace of God strengthen you. May the peace of God lift you up in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Not only that, we pray that you be protected. We pray that your family be protected. We pray that the hand of God will cover you in the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. We join the thousands and the millions of people that are praying for you, our doctors, praying for you, our nurses, praying for you who are working in testing and screening centers, praying for you all who are exposed. We pray for you, our MECs that are running around and saving our people. We pray for you in the name of Jesus, our ministers that are running around to try to save our people. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are praying for you today. We lift you before God. May the hand of Jehovah God be upon you. We pray for our command council, our president and the entire team. We pray that the hand of the Lord our God be upon you. And may the Spirit of God lead and guide you in your decisions in all that you you decide may the spirit of jehovah god lead and guide you we bind and frustrate all the plans of the enemy in the name of jesus and we rebuke the spirit of fear even from our leaders in jesus mighty name for we know fear causes people to do funny things and in the name of jesus we arrest the spirit of fear in the name that's above every name we pray my lord and god that our nation will rise up that our people will rise up that our communities will rise up and cry out to jehovah God and run to the refuge the Lord our God our hiding place in the mighty name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God and I want to pray right now 
for everybody that is sick in your body. You know, in a time like this and in a season like this, whenever you feel any pain, people think, oh, it is the, it is the coronavirus. Look, I must be honest with you. you. If you are managing conditions, yes, the conditions will have their ups and downs. But I want you to know, refuse to fear. Because fear will invite things that are far away from you. Refuse to fear and deal with what you are facing. I rebuke every sickness. I rebuke every disease. I rebuke every infirmity in your body by the authority of the name of Jesus. Be healed from the crown of your head to the sole and bottom of your feet in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And right now, I want to pray for those people, uh, those businesses, those people that are saying, things are not working out uh, the economy is going down and it's affecting me it's affecting my my livelihood it, my livelihood is affecting my income in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god i pray that the spirit of god will fill you with when t adventures with creative ideas with may god open your eyes to see what he has for you because i believe the lord my god that as doors closes but other doors are opening up may god open your eyes to see the doors that he's opening up for you in a time in a season like this in the mighty name of jesus christ the son of the living god and right now i want to pray and pray for our nation in this season i want to pray for us all pray for our provinces pray for our districts pray for our municipalities in the name of jesus christ father we lift up south africa before you in the name that's above every name our hope is in you my god our trust is in you my father by you we run through troops by you we leap over walls and in the name of jesus christ lord i stand as your servant today repent of our sins and repent of our wrongs and repent of our evil in the name of jesus christ of nazareth and lord god almighty we cry out to you and we say lord remember mercy in the name of jesus be merciful to your people to be merciful to our nation be merciful to our families be merciful to our communities in the name that's above every name the name of jesus christ of nazareth and my lord and god we shall be careful to bring all the glory to bring all the honor and the adoration to your name in the mighty name of jesus christ the son of the living god and family in the mighty name of Jesus Christ oh, of Nazareth, you, I want you to know it's going to be well. Amen. I want you to know God loves you and God cares about you. In Jesus' name. And over to you again, Pastor Jaylene, as you wrap up the service. Thank you so very much. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Overseer, and to Manata Banega's family, and to all the brethren that we Thank were together you, in the service. Thank you so much. Have a blessed week. Know that you are more than a conqueror yes. through Christ Jesus, our Lord. May the Lord be with you. May you journey through this week, and may you see the grace of the Lord upon your life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God bless you. Thank you.